Good evening, sports fans. What's going on, y'all? Welcome to the season two premiere of the Sports Couple Perspective. Right here on IE Sports Radio, your directly for all that is sports. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been too long. Can we get an applause? Thank you very much. It has been too long since we've been on air. We've decided to make an entire second season because, well, the first season, we just decided we wanted to call that the first season. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, here we go tonight. We got some good stuff for y'all. Before we get even to that, I must, of course, introduce my beautiful co-host, my lovely, wonderful, amazing fiance, Cecilia. What's going on, babe? How you doing today? Hello. We have some funny things to get into tonight, of course. Uh, probably the best, <laughs> the best we're going to get into first. The second part is just going to be like, wow. Um, but uh, actually, no, I'm going to switch that around. My apologies. The first part's going to be kind of, wow, you've got to be kidding me. And of course, the second half of tonight's show is going to be, you know, on the more serious. And not saying that the first issue is not serious, but the second one, of course, is known as... I mean, really, when you deem something the worst night in NBA history, uh, yeah, it's pretty serious. So, you all know on Netflix, the new series, Untold, just got released. And there are some good stuff on there, I'm sure. But the first one that got released back on August 10th, I believe, was the date. The Malice in the Palace. Yes, Ron Artest, Stephen Jackson... And Mr. O'Neill heading up into the stands. Um, scary stuff. Ben Wallace, you know what that is, all right? So we are going to get into that tonight. We watched it on Netflix. Really good job by them to put this together. And of course, before we get to that, though, we're getting into a story that has just been growing larger and larger and larger over the last couple of days. And that is the high school, or <laughs> not high school, that is Bishop Sycamore out of Ohio. With that said, y'all, welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you're ready for a good one tonight, y'all. You are tuned in live to the Sports Couple Perspectives right here on IE Sports Radio, your directly for all that is sports. Welcome, 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 sports fans. How's it going tonight, y'all? Hopefully, we are on. We catch you at a good time. I know. I really think we should be getting on earlier, especially for those on the west, on the east coast over there at ten o'clock at night. Our apologies, but yes, I do feel that this show must be an earlier time slot coming up because yeah, it's kind of hard. West Coast listeners, we appreciate y'all, but we understand it's Friday night. We also understand it's on kind of late. So if you're listening to the podcast version of this tomorrow, the next day, or whenever, we really appreciate you so very much for being a part of us and just listening and enjoying. Uh, but if you are listening live, welcome, and we thank you so much for being here tonight. So with that said, season two. You excited for season two coming up? You like that? Yeah. Season one. I want your favorite memory. Because we're going to get right into it. I, I want to have some fun because getting into last year, uh, this last, earlier this year. So brief explanation. We did have – the show started back in January. We, of course, moved in together. We had a really, you know, uh, a very eventful uh, April, May, and we just kind of lost track of the show. We went into June, had a little bit, uh, a few shows there, and then just kind of called it. It's been very tough, lots of uh, lots of things getting situated, missed a lot. But I will tell you right now – uh, we decided to go ahead and just make an entire new season and call this a seasonal show. So we'll be on for a few months. We'll let you know when it is going to be our time. Eventually we're going to find like a, a fine line between, you know, maybe every three to four months around there and then call it and then give about a month or two, you know, about a month around there and then jump into a new season. It'll work for us, of course, especially because I got a million shows, of course, during football season. <laughs> That's always fun. And, of course, since we, you know, we're busy, both extremely busy, got a lot going on. Um, so to catch you guys up on some stuff, for those who like to, you know, listen in and, and, and check us out, for sure, we definitely got to say it's been awesome. Uh, of course, checking, living in our new city of Marietta, really, really cool because we got to experience a little... I guess you can call it a little street festival last night. It was pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah, it was different and nice. What did you think about all those little vendors? 
They're really cool. Everybody was really nice. <laughs> I really, uh, I was pretty excited to go check that out last night. And we've been wanting to go, but like I said, it's this busy, busy, busy craziness going on and everything. But I'll tell you right now, uh, we have just gotten through so, so much as in like job wise and everything. I'm finally back to work. So I think that deserves an applause on its own. I mean, I seriously think so. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Yeah. Because, no, I needed this. We needed this freaking job. Okay, the school districts are in extreme demand right now. I'm sure really cool going back to work and back to making good money. Um, of course, we are uh, just doing lots of cool things. I have just started my credential program to start teaching. Uh, I know it's going to take a little bit to your program. It's going to drag a little bit because of student teaching, but it's all good and really cool. So Celia's actually decided to go back to school for her bachelor's, y'all. Yay! <laughs> Hey, look, this is exciting, okay? This is pretty exciting. Um, I'm just saying, this, this is a huge thing. Okay? So my very soon be sister in law yes, she has, she's doing her thing right now, whizzing through her program with her associates, and there's nothing that's going to stop her from getting it. Really excited, because I feel like together we've motivated Cecilia to, to just jump on it and get this BA, and she's all for it. So how, how do you feel about this, baby? But by this time next year, you'll be starting your Baxter. Are you excited? Yes and no. <laughs> give, give me a reason why you're not excited. Go ahead. Because school is just time consuming. And I hate the homework, but I know it'll go fast. In the moment, it doesn't, but it's worth it in the end, I guess. Oh, so worth it. Mm-mm. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just saying, I think it's pretty awesome. It's pretty worth it. So, yeah, she's going to have her credential. This one's going to be teaching. She's going to be getting her teach on a little bit. Really excited for that. And, and like I said, it's just a big thing, you know. So just lots of cool stuff we got going on here and trying to get things going. So with that said, y'all, just a little bit of introduction of what we've got going on and all these things. Football season. Thank you to everybody who's been following me on Twitter um, and checking me out, all of my little uh, updates on my injury. That I unfortunately sustained in game number one of the season, but I'm back at it. Uh, big ups to the Warriors, man. The Southern California Warriors, of course, one of our sponsors here at IE Sports Radio. Uh, Got to go show them some love at SoCal Warriors on Twitter. Show them a little bit of love. Of course, that's my team as well. Check out highlights and latest stats. Um, really, really, really excited uh, about this season, and um, I mean, not latest stats, but you know, the latest on the Warriors. We're two and one in those two games I didn't play. We, they won one and lost one, so I'm really excited. We've got a bye week this week, no game tomorrow, but coming up next week, we've got the Inland Empire Kings. Really excited for that game. A local rival here in in uh, Southern California, so really excited for that game coming up here. Should be a fun one, and of course, uh, I gotta say also big ups to. Our other sponsor, got to show a little bit of love here as well to uh, my boy, Mr. Kit, man. Great, great stuff he's got going on with his company. And that, of course, is Background Check International. So make sure to reach out to Mr. Kit. at uh, Check out the website, www.bcint.com. Um, really cool stuff. Remember, we don't condone the uh, – this is only for professional use. Uh, background checks, so not for anything else, such as crimes or identity theft or anything, but no, nothing that has to do with any type of illegal activity. Regardless, though, check out Kit and uh, Kit Fremen, actually, on Facebook at Background Check International BCI. So go show them some, some love there. And also, the Warriors, you can also follow on Instagram, follow our journey at Southern California underscore Warriors, and on Facebook at Southern California Warriors. So, um, Big ups, y'all. Semi Pro is a, is a, is an amazing world, and I love playing in it. So, uh, really excited just for lots of great things going on with these two sponsors, and we appreciate you both for showing us love and help keep the lights on here at I Sports Radio. So, with that said, had some great stuff on earlier today. Big ups at Mr. Taron Rodriguez and the SoCal Supreme Sports Show. Awesome stuff as always earlier today. He was on at 1 p.m. Pacific time, 4 p.m. Eastern. So, uh, I've got to go show him some love there. And tomorrow, get ready because Mr. Justin Lar is coming your way, 7 a.m. Pacific time. For all of you guys who like some Indiana sports over here on the West Coast, but in the Eastern Time Zone, yes, Mr. Justin Lar will be here tomorrow talking Indiana sports on High Octane Entertainment. So big up to him, and uh, there we go. So with that said, we're going to take ourselves a short break, a little bit of introduction there. When we get back, we are going to talk about a high school that doesn't exist. 
Yeah, more about that on the other side. You're listening to the Sports Couples Perspective right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We'll be right back after this. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me and hear me good. If you like sports, then you like the Wait a Minute Show. If you like comedy, then you like the Wait a Minute Show. If you like a different opinion coming from a different angle, then you like the Wait a Minute Show. So join me Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with your host, Jelani J.B. Bodie. And of course, my man Lopan on the Wait a Minute Show. Rushing waters of the Columbia River, stretching across the Great Cascades, and on IE Sports Radio lives the Northwest Territory Sports Show, hosted by me, Brad Buckingham. On this show, I cover all the great collegiate and professional sports teams that we have here in the Pacific Northwest. Of course, I'm talking about the Seattle Seahawks, Seattle Mariners, Sounders, and even the Seattle Kraken. But I can't forget all of that is good in Oregon either. I got the Trailblazers, the Oregon Ducks, the Beavers, even the Timbers, and much, much more. You can listen to the show every Sunday from 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern, noon to 1 p.m. Pacific, on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Sports fans, are you looking for the latest on Northern California sports? Then take a trip out west with me, your host, Gina G, on Reppin' the NorCal Sports, right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'll be bringing it to you all the way live every Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. And it's always a packed show. I'll bring you everything. Dynastic 49ers. The bite of the San Jose Sharks. Torture of the San Francisco Giants. The Golden State Warriors that we still believe. Then take you across the bay to the rise and grind of the Oakland A's. I've got you covered on college ball from the Cal Bears to the Stanford Cardinal, so that no matter what, reppin' in NorCal sports is always reppin' the Bay. So if you bleed red and gold, or you're looking to keep an eye out west in them thar hills, don't miss me, Gina G, on reppin' in NorCal sports. Catch me every Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, and I'll have your fandom repped harder than a trio of Defenders Garden Stephen Curry before his buzzer beater is Gucci. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to show each one of those shows some love. Rep the NorCal Sports with Miss Gina G, of course, the Northwest 
Territory Sports Show with Mr. Brad Buckingham. Great dude. And of course, check out our boy John and JB Bodie over there on the X Squad doing his thing with the weight of in the show. So big ups to every one of those shows. And check us out on Sky Sports Radio. I mean, you know, Jelani doing his own thing, of course, but the other, the other shows show some love, man. Show Jelani some love. You know how it goes. So with that said, let's move on to the school that never was. <laughs> first things first. Earlier this week, there was a high school. Well, actually, Sunday, there was a high school that played the number two team in the country, the IMG Academy. In this game, Bishop Sycamore would be the team to play this extremely tough IMG Academy. In this game, the, the score went through the roof. The IMG Academy, a bunch of high schoolers, just stomped all over. Why do I say a bunch of high schoolers? Because... Apparently, Bishop Sycamore had guys where the the youngest players on the team were 18 years old, and other guys on this team were supposedly up to 25 years old. Yeah, you're talking about guys who should have already been in college and have already played. Playing on this team, they never practice. Okay, I don't know where they get the equipment from, but they never practice together as a team. This head coach has been known for the last couple of years to get to, to drag these athletes in to try and say this is a school for them, to try and get them out. And, of course, these guys are going to do what they can to try and get out. Unfortunately, some of them would even uh, – I mean, it sucks. I mean, some allegedly would lie um, on, you know, make, like, fake IDs and everything to participate in camps. And just all these crazy things we've been watching on YouTube. And it's incredible to think that – this this coach and his staff, I mean, they're not even a real place. We looked into it, not necessarily roughness, great show, The Fumble, great show on YouTube. There's a few more shows we are checking out, a few more podcasts and things like that last night for dinner, but when we were, when we were eating dinner. But oh my goodness, you guys. Uh, the, the address to, the, to this uh, supposed online charter school was the address to a house, a freaking house, okay? <laughs> Um, that was crazy. I mean, you look at things so small. The face, the face mask from the quarterback was a different color. It was a red. The rest of the teams were black. They had no roster. I'm sorry, they had a roster, but the roster was just a bunch of names, no numbers, no year of a high school they were in. Apparently, of course, they wanted to hide that pretty well. Well, it had um, the positions that they played. And the positions that they played. It had the positions, and that was it. And there was about 30 guys on the team. Everyone was going both ways. And on top of that, the, 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 uh, you know how ESPN got that freaking roster for Sunday's game? Yeah, from an announcer that called a game that they actually played on Friday night. No one plays football within three days. Friday night, they played a game last Friday night, lost to a Pennsylvania school. No travel to, oh, they would travel to Canton, Ohio. guess it was a home game for them because they're from Ohio. And they would play against IMG Academy, where the IMG Academy absolutely destroyed them 58-0. to zero. And these guys don't even, like I said, who knows if they even condition. They looked out of shape. They looked horrible. They, even the announcers were bashing them, saying, like, well, they supposedly have a bunch of D1 offers and all this and that going on. I mean... This is not the first time, apparently, these coaches have done this after watching a couple of videos on YouTube. It has just been incredible seeing what has been going on. Then today there was an update that I was watching on YouTube earlier, and I wish it could have came on in just sleep, but I forgot all about it. But big ups to Matt B. Great on, uh, once again, Matt B. Great on YouTube. Give him a follow. But my goodness, he had a, has a video called The Bishop Sycamore Bozos are in a, are in even more trouble now. Apparently, this coach got fired by the defensive lineman coach, which, how do you get fired by somebody who you're, like, over? Higher than? Because apparently that guy is, like, the AD of the school or something. Weird. Or the principal. How is the defensive lineman coach the principal? I mean, I would say, weird stuff going on. So, regardless, all this is going on, and this has been absolutely insane. I'm going to shut up now, because Cecilia actually has some stuff to say about this, like, big time, because this is pretty funny. Um, but first things first... What were you thinking when we were watching this yesterday? This was brand new to you. I was shocked and laughed about it because it's just like, how can, I don't know. They didn't have that much information on this supposedly school. And it's just like, how did they even play against other high schools and stuff like that? I don't know. A lot just seemed like it fell through the cracks. Like, a lot. (laughs) <laughs> like, way too much, right? I think they were just wanting to play the game, and that was it. Like, as long as they got a game, okay, fine, like, you know, that's it. it the craziest part to me, that I remember, like, seeing your reaction when they would... <laughs> this was pretty funny. This is comical. Kind of sad, but comical at the same exact time. The GoFundMe account. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. This coaching staff 
made one of the highest, nastiest, well, one of the most difficult schedules in the country, playing schools all over the place, okay? Playing schools all over the country. And apparently, uh, this is a, so it's supposed to be a top, top charter school to help out these, these students. And apparently a lot of them are going D1. They're D1 bound, okay? And guess what? They're, they have a GoFundMe page started by the coach to get them to travel. I mean, was and then the funniest part about it was in that GoFundMe page, they, their goal was twenty thousand dollars. They made one hundred and forty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after seeing all of this, what really was your reaction of thinking of how this even began? And think about this. I remember you were saying yesterday, like, how did this, how did this even get by ESPN? Oh yeah, I mean, ESPNs are. Or the people that work there are friggin' journalists. They went to school to be a journalist. So it's just like, I mean, I really don't know much about being a journalist, but I'm pretty sure they have to figure out, they kind of have to investigate, get the facts and everything like that, especially about, you know, a sport, since that's what they focus on. I don't know. It just seems like, They obviously didn't do their job, and I feel like that's, like, the most embarrassing story ever for ESPN to experience. I mean, I think that's an understatement. You're absolutely correct. It's insane to think of how they got duped. I mean, how does a school that doesn't exist get on national television, on ESPN, to play the number two team, IMG Academy? Now... They're not totally, I, I'm not going to say this, and I, I don't want your opinion on this. We watched a couple of videos on this yesterday, and, and, and my, my concern was the IMG Academy, and a couple of videos even said this that we were watching, the IMG Academy, the number two team in the country, okay, only second to modern day, which of course is a powerhouse right here in Santa Ana, California, um, number one right now, uh, I mean, this is incredible. You, you think of the IMG Academy how would they not know? They played them last year. How I know last year was COVID, and maybe that was the excuse. They're just trying to play whoever. But how how could nobody do their homework to know that this school isn't even a real school? Like, you know, like, what do you personally think? I want to know what you, what, how you feel about this team, the teams they played already, uh, at least, I don't know if they played, in, uh, you know, other teams a, a few times already, um, at least in the last two seasons or last season, but the IMG Academy. Don't you think kind of shame on them for not doing their homework and playing this team twice? No, maybe knowing or not. I mean, maybe they knew, which is shame on them if they knew to play this team. Um, even in COVID times, and you can find somebody else to play. Or do you just think that, hey, someone just didn't do their homework and it's really not their fault and it's not their job to do that, not even the AED of the school, which I think it would be. Well, what's your personal thoughts on that? Uh, I mean, who knows? I mean, I don't know. Um, during... COVID and everything like that, they, you know, people did what they had to do, I guess. Um, but I think they just wanted a game, really. I mean, even them, even though they played them already, and, you know, obviously, maybe they did know that, you know, this, these people weren't a real school, but just wanted to play, I guess, maybe to use them as practice or something. But either way, they should have done their homework and caught all the red flags because there was a lot of red flags like they would look up the address and it went to a home um they even you know looked up their website and it was just people posting on there like like it was twitter or something like that um but yeah i don't know i think it's just embarrassing and a shame that they let it go for so long i just think that <laughs> it's incredible to think that this school has gotten where it has. I mean, last year they went 0-6. Okay, in, in their defense, COVID destroyed a lot of things. Yeah. It did. COVID made it hard for, for, for high schools to play. Last year, teams got lucky if they played any games, scrimmages, some of them. The NFL, of course, I think were the only, the only teams, uh, the only – Anything that was football to actually play, the only league to actually play. But even then, a bunch of players opted out because of COVID. Okay, mm-hmm. then you have college, the Division One college colleges that played 
if they got lucky, maybe four, five, six games. Last year, USC went to a bowl game and they went five and zero. They only played five games. Mm. Like, you, you know what I mean? They usually play about twelve or, or twelve. So I understand last year, but this year it's like, come on, you know, like IMG Academy, really, like maybe they, they should have known something. So I don't know. So football <laughs> is a crazy thing, <clears throat> and it's it's incredible to think of what's going on, you know, with this whole bit. So I, we just wanted to bring this, you know, a little attention to this because this is hilarious to think that this school came up out of nowhere. And overall, we heard in some videos yesterday, too, that these coaches are using Christianity to try and say, like, oh, yeah, bring your boys here, you know, play, have them play here, and trying to throw Jesus around, saying, oh, yeah, you know, we're, we're a religious institution and everything like that. I mean, overall, what do you really think about this? These guys, these coaches, that's really scummy. They're, they're trying to bring in these players. Uh, there was reports where some of these players in the past – uh, that spoke out were sleeping in this coach's living room and having to steal from like Walmart and other places like local stores to even eat. I mean, what do you think about these guys? Like that's sad. Like knowing that you're not a real school and knowing that you can't get a football team that you want. Like why oh. drag other people into your into that world? Like into the f- fake world of you know, fraud, basically. And then having, you know, these poor kids um, commit crimes, um, you know, I don't know. It's just horrible. And then, like, bringing a religion in, I think, especially if you don't believe in it, is not cool. Because obviously you're bringing that religion down and you're making that religion look bad. And it's not cool to the people who believe in that. It's not. It's a really. It's a black eye. I'm very disappointed that these guys would even try to sell something like that. And these kids, you know, they just want a place to play. But then again, at the same exact time, though, I think the players are also at fault too. Because if you know you're 19 or 20 years old and you already graduated high school, some of these players have been like, you know, it's been it's known. I guess some of these guys are way older. I mean, this is kind of ridiculous. You know, some of these guys were even sought to be. JUCO players, junior college players that either dropped out or finished playing high school, or finished playing JUCO, and they came back to play against high school teams. Yeah, by that age, you should already know right from wrong. Yeah, I mean, what do you think you're really going to do? Do you think you're going to play and then get noticed? Oh yeah, you know that player? Which one? You know that player over there that played in that game versus IMG Academy? Oh yeah, that guy's really good. Oh, yeah, high school. Yeah, well, he's 23 and he's really, really good. And we think what well, I'm just saying. I hate to sound like such an a hole. But at the end of the day, come on. I mean, unless these guys are just playing to play. But at that point in time, you play semi-pro, like with the Warriors. Big, yeah. big shout-out to our sponsors. But you know what I mean? But it's just, you know, that's basically what this was. And I hate to diss semi-pro, but, you know, we're not – I mean, we're semi-professional, but we're not professional. And we're definitely, you know, not on the high-caliber level of, like, playing against the Jets or the Patriots. So it's, like, insane to think that – I mean, don't get me wrong. A lot of these guys can play at that level. You know, we, we work very hard. But – at least I feel like I feel like yeah, you know, a lot of us can. But I'll tell you right now, it's really sad to think that basically a semi-pro team that was put together by these coaches who are trying to, you know, making up schools, making up a charter school, making up, these guys didn't even go to class. There's no school, okay? And they're playing against the top high schools in the country. That these these guys are actually division one commits and verbal commits and all this and that. These guys are actually going to play for Clemson, USC, Alabama, Florida State. I mean, seriously. And you're gonna have these guys play against them. And these guys are just average Joes who may or may not even have been good at football and they're just playing to play to have fun. And and trying to make apparently they're making these guys money somehow. And apparently not a whole bunch of money because they're sending them a GoFundMe account. Mm-hmm. And even that, I'm sure that they, they may just be making money off of this and not trying to spend their own money. That's why they're asking for GoFundMe. So I'm going to say, it, this whole thing is ridiculous, and I'm just very – it's saddening. It's very saddening to hear the news of all these players and their stories and just – this is ridiculous, and I just really hope this whole thing gets shut down and it doesn't need to come back. Yeah, no, definitely. And uh, they need to start everyone, schools, um, <laughs> ESPN needs to start doing their homework. A little better. Yeah, that's for sure. And so making th- sure that, you know, a school is legit. Seriously, like 100% legit because that was crazy. So, yeah, ESPN, you get a pass. I get it. Maybe not. You know, maybe you don't have the best 
you know, uh, maybe, well, not, not the best, but maybe you, you didn't do your homework this time and whatever, whatever. But at the end of the day, please, next time do your homework because it's that was humiliating for those guys to watch. Imagine for the guys that even played in that game and they were on national television. I'm just saying, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it, that was just really sad. So, yeah, everybody sees that as a big joke. Exactly. And it's really sad to think that maybe these players for the first, last, and only time were on TV was the time they got humiliated. It's maybe, sad because everybody wants that 15 minute of fame it is just for what i mean yeah people will remember it from time to time but even then it's just like it gets you nowhere it doesn't and i'm very i'm distraught i'm very sickened by this whole thing but at the same exact time i mean some of it got kind of comical like the gofundme thing yeah and like the you know i mean like the school that popped out of nowhere and the address being a house <laughs> you know but if then you think about it the reality is actually kind of sad actually really sad so with that said you guys um anything to close off this topic babe anything to say anything more to add to it because i mean, that's pretty much gonna do it um for this topic but anything else you want to throw out there before we close the door on it um no i mean basically just do your homework make sure <laughs> everything is le- everything is legit yeah that's for sure so with that said y'all <laughs> That's going to do it for the first half of our show here tonight. Talking to little Bishop Sycamore, and uh, hopefully they won't be returning. Next up, we are talking about the brand new Netflix series Untold and a particular show on that known as the worst night in NBA history back in 2004. What did that actually mean for three players who were brought on to this Pacer team? And... What did it really mean for a legend that could have possibly rode off into the sunset in his final season with a ring? Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking mallets at the palace. Right on the other side of this break, you're listening to the Sports Couples Perspective right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What's good, fight fans? It's your boy, Marcus Los Great. Here to give you what you want. Here to give you what you need. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming to you live. Straight from your mama's basement with a crispy awesome. White tea. <laughs> we are coming to you live every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What's happening, sports fans? Are you a fan of Southern California sports? Are you looking for a show hotter than a hot summer day in California? Then look no further than the SoCal Supreme Sports Show, where I talk about all things Southern California sports. That's right, all sports teams from Southern California. From the hard-hitting tackles of the NFL, to the killer crossovers and big three-pointers of the NBA and WNBA, to the grand slams of the MLB, to the bone-chilling goals of the NHL, and to the booming kicks of the MLS, the SoCal Supreme Sports Show has it all for you. Oh, and let us not forget about the college sports as well. So join me, Taryn Rodriguez, every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports.
college football. And do you want to hear a college football show dedicated to all this college football, including junior college and the Triple CAA and the NJCAA, the NAIA, and the NCAA, including Division Three, Division Two, Division One AA in the FCS, and Division One Single A in the FBS. Well, then look no further. Join myself, Larry B., and my colleagues, Mr. H. Town Blake, Blake Henley, and Mr. Christian Espinoza, each week during the college football season for the latest in college football on Three and Out College Edition, right here on IE Sports Radio, your directory for all that is sports. Sports Radio. It is your direct feed for all that is sports. It is Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris every Tuesday night right here on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris is the most comprehensive view on Philadelphia sports exclusively right here on IE Sports Radio. You know what it is. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Tuesday night, IE Sports Radio, Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. You got to catch Philly Sports Talk, Cash and Chris, every Tuesday evening. Great stuff, as always. And before we get into our final topic of the night, we just want to thank everybody once again for tuning in, showing us some love, and uh, it's been fun so far. No game tonight, by the way. I wanted to announce we were going to play. We were going to play a fun game called Timelines. This little something that I cooked up. Uh, Cecilia wasn't too fond of it, and we just had a little. We didn't. We didn't really get a whole bunch of prep and everything for it. So we may play this one coming up next week. We'll have game night for sure. We're going to reintroduce game night. We might play this one just one round and see how we go and see how it goes. But with that said, I do want to say. Hey, though, um, before we uh, get into the rest of the show, we're talking some football. Why not have some fun talking high school football? Just because I guess really, really fast. Uh, for those of you who don't know, which I don't know how you wouldn't, my alma mater is, of course, out of Paris, California, the Paris Panthers. So big ups to the Panthers. They would win their first game of the season a couple weeks ago versus Conference Centennial, uh, 28 to 8 at home. And uh, really cool to see them win it, however, or to, you know, to get that victory. Uh, however, last night they would play their second game of the season, and it wouldn't go so well. They would get absolutely destroyed by Desert Hot Springs, 46-8. to So, unfortunately, unfortunate for them, um, well, for us, because I'm still, you know, I'm always a Panther at heart. But 1-1 uh, one one now on the season, so next week they'll head on over to play Cathedral City. Actually, no, they'll be home versus Cathedral City. So, um, best of luck. And... This is going to be fun, but ladies and gentlemen, if y'all don't know, which I don't know how you would, my beautiful fiance Cecilia here is a uh, once Ramona Ram in Riverside, of course, so go Rams. Uh, kind of cool, because we, where we live now, the high school across the street, they're the Rams too, so pretty cool. <laughs> so we're in Ram country. Um, but to, it was funny, we talked about it one time, we were like, it was hilarious, I was like a panther and a ram, so he was like, who'd have thought? <laughs> that was a pretty funny thing, but... but um, Pretty cool here. Last night, actually, actually, no, was this, this, they had a bye week this week, but last week, big ups to the Ramona High School Rams, winning their first game of the season, defeating King High School 24 to 20, so congratulations. Just saying, babe, I know, it's been a long time, but we've both been in high school for a very long time, but kind of cool though, right? Look at back all matter, no, no, no. No, okay, fine. Well, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, just so you guys know, Ramona, a couple of years ago, actually, I believe two years ago, made it all the way to CIF, lost in their home stadium to a very good team, Esperanza from Orange County. 
Um, they made it all the way to the CIF final and got to host the game, I think, in Riverside. So pretty cool. Uh, as for my Panthers, well, we've, we've been a long way from that. I don't know if they're all if they're both Division 14. Regardless, though, pretty cool to see the Rams doing such good things, and hopefully the Panthers can get on track with that. So with that said, <laughs> with that said a little bit of fun there, a little bit of fun high school stuff. But um, – because it's high school football, y'all. It's football time. We gotta get excited. So all over the place. So with that said, um, we're gonna talk about the malice and the palace. First things first. We all know the story, but I'm gonna quickly go over it. And I know, I know. I'm getting the look over here from Cecilia. I know nothing's ever quick with me. My apologies. I'm gonna go really fast though. Okay, as fast as I can. Okay, in the game. Towards the end, I think, or somewhere, Ron Artest gets checked by Ben Wallace. Apparently, after listening to a couple of interviews before this, before even watching the Untold last night or two nights ago, we watched it together after grocery shopping. <clears throat> we had a uh, oh, sorry, I, I saw that Ben Wallace and Ron Artest were not really well, formally known as Ron Artest now, Metal World Peace. Um, weren't really cool for a while. You know, they, it was an ongoing little rivalry between the two, and Ron Artest and um, Ben Wallace would be kind of chippy that game. The game was clearly over. The game was 100% over. Okay, the history beside, that goes into this is earlier uh, that year, in the fin- in the Eastern Conference Finals, I believe, or somewhere in the playoffs, but I think it was the Eastern Conference Finals, uh, you would have the Pacers playing against Detroit, and it would be a chippy series. Ron Artest has a flagrant foul. I think that was the, the one that actually cost them to lose the game they needed, or one of them. But regardless, just a toughie. Uh, I'm not going to throw it all on Ron, but I'm just saying, uh, at least from what I can remember, should have taken some notes. But regardless, they took a loss to the Pistons. The Pistons would go on to win the championship that year. They would go on to the finals. They would beat that team. I forgot whoever it was. And they would freaking win the title. Okay. Indiana, a little irritated about that, but understood. Okay. A uh, young man by the name of Jermaine O'Neal, who they bring in that year, I believe. And he gets, uh, oh, no, no, I think Jermaine O'Neal was already there. Uh, I think it was Stephen Jackson who they brought in that year, who, you know, wasn't really a part of the rivalry, but gets jumped right on into it. And, of course, you know, when if you, especially if you lose to a team at that point in the season, you're going to have them circled on your calendar when you play them in the regular season, if you do. And um, in the NBA, I think you can play everybody once at least or twice, uh, no matter, regardless of your uh, conference or your division, at least I think. It's not like football where you're going to miss some teams or you play them every four years or whatever. But just saying, so craziness happens in this game. Okay? The game was clearly over. Indiana went into the Palace and they were dominating. Absolutely dominating the the uh, Detroit Pistons. Okay? This was not even close. Um, and overall, it's really crazy to think of how this whole thing actually went from here. The game, the final score, or at least the score was 97 to 82 with 46, 45.9 seconds. Right now I'm watching the YouTube video, uh, courtesy of Cut Hat, or Cup Hat on YouTube, once again, C-U-P-H-A-T, uh, watching the video here called Pacers slash Pistons Brawl 2004 original, um, just to make sure I'm getting, getting things accurate here. And Ron Artest checks... Ben Wallace really hard at the end of the game. And what happens? Ben Wallace will shove Ron Artest. Ron Artest goes backwards. You can see he's heated. But the you know the teams start kind of squabbling towards the scorer's table. Uh, guess what? Ron Artest will lay on the bench for some undisclosed reason. I, we learned about that, of course, why he did that. But he'll lay on the bench. He will kick back. And what happens? <laughs> A brawl breaks out, of course. Well, at least, you know, the guys are pushing and shoving. But what happens a few seconds into that, a few, maybe like a minute into him laying there, a bottle of beer comes flying out of the audience and smacks Ron Artest right in the head. Ron Artest is a guy who is, you know, known to be a little chippy, but what would you really do? It would be hard for me, okay? I don't care who. I mean, of course, I'm a little hot-headed myself. But I think, honestly, even the average person, yeah, the, huh, as, as Cecilia laughs. A little. Under no, her I'm just brother. kidding. <laughs> but just kidding. I think anybody would lose their gosh damn mind if they got hit in the freaking head by a beer bottle and didn't collapse or didn't fall over, you know, or even if they did, you, if you, and, you didn't, and you were still conscious, you'd probably get up and freaking go after whoever the hell threw the bottle. Well, guess what? That's exactly what he did. The bottle hit him in the face. And he would get up and run into the stands and attack 
a, a guy. Was it the guy who threw the bottle? No. <laughs> but he attacked a guy. And that guy who actually threw the bottle would get his arms around him and try and pull him off. Um, of course, we later on would learn, that, you know, that he was the guy who threw the bottle. Regardless, Stephen Jackson then runs into the stands, and he gets a beer thrown in his face. He punches a fan. Artest is already punching others and everything. He's already punching in there, doing his thing. Ben Wallace runs up there. Some more Pacers run in there. Jermaine O'Neal was actually, I don't think he even went in the stands. And if he did, it was really light. Regardless, when Ron Artest gathers himself, he comes back from the stands. And he comes down to the bottom. There was a court, uh, a fan on the court that kind of rushed him, kind of like looked at him and kind of squared up with him. Ron Artest Punches him in the face and drops him, and then out of nowhere, Jermaine O'Neal will run to his to to this fan and try to hit him too, and he slips. He throws a punch, but he slips right before he hits him. It looks like he connected, but he didn't, and he falls down. And the police are in the you know there's a few police in there. Reggie Miller is in a suit because he's injured, and he is asked by the police why he's even down there. Like they didn't know it was Reggie Miller. I guess he didn't know. But in their defense, it was it was the heat of the moment. Then they realized, oh, it was Reggie Miller. And then before you know it, everyone starts coming out. Everyone starts you know trying to leave the players. The game is being called. The referees are like, it's over, game over. These guys are fighting. Everyone starts fighting. Fans are on the court. They're fighting. People are in the audience fighting. Still, they're fighting the players. Now, as the players are going into some of the players are getting pulled in by their coaches into the into the aisle, um, well, into the locker rooms. You see beer being poured on them as they go by. You see bottles getting thrown at them. You can see popcorn and everything you can think of getting thrown. Jermaine O'Neal gets a chair thrown at him that didn't quite hit him, but freaking drops somebody next to him. There was an old person on the ground who I think it hit. They were trampling over. People were, people were running all over the place. It was a full-on riot, the malice in the palace. Now, first things first, before we go ahead and get into the overall um story of everything at least we got to see like you know what really happened but what were your thoughts on this entire thing as we first walked as i first showed you before we actually watched the uh the episode on netflix um i thought it was crazy i couldn't believe it um <clears throat> sorry excuse me um just i've ne- i i i don't know i guess i've never seen like a big fight like that especially with fans and the players and stuff like that, like, you know, I would expect the players to have, you know, to be a little bit more respectful. I mean, I know it sucks to have, you know, a bottle thrown at you, but I don't know. That was just, it was a lot to take in, and I've never seen anything that bad before in a professional game before. Last night, well, when I was showing to you this first, the very first time, her reaction was priceless. She was... She was like, "I would have that." Well, tell them, tell, say, say what you were th- what you were saying about like what you would have done if this had been if you would have had somehow had some say into what happened to everybody who participated. Um, I should start writing these 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 things down. I can never remember. Um, <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, I think I just said everybody should just get in trouble. <laughs> I mean, it was more of the heat of the moment before I even like really understood everything in the you know in the whole situation. I was just like, players should get fired. You know, people you know should pay for what they did to the players as well and whatnot. But I think after going into more detail, my opinion changed. Obviously, it was crazy to think, and and, and really, I mean, how it also. I mean, if you look at it, if you watch the Mouse in the Palace, like it's on YouTube, it's worth the watch. Oh, uh, oh, on, on meant, Netflix, on it's Netflix, worth the watch. But if you were to watch it on YouTube and it's kind of like watch it a few times, I think you come to the same conclusion that it all started from a fan. But I think if after you watch it on Netflix, there's so much more to the story, isn't there? Yeah, they obviously go into more detail and um, like go they go more behind of you know how it all unraveled. It was it was crazy. Now it all starts off, and I'm kind of on Netflix on my phone right now, just skimming, so I can get the names, of course, of some players and everything. So big up to Netflix, man! Gotta go check it out once again. Great stuff there. But um, okay, so a player by the name of Jamal Tinsley. <laughs> Is that his name? Yes, baby. he would spark the fire. He would be the match or the lighter in a room full of gas that is on our test <laughs> because my goodness. Ron Artest, I don't know when this was, but he gets checked by Ben Wallace. Okay. I did not know that 
this was a very emotional game for Ben Wallace. I don't know how many days before this or if it was that day, but Ben Wallace just lost his brother. You play games with emotion like like that. Brett Favre lost his father, I think, the day before or a few days before, or maybe in the day of. They played the Raiders back in, like, 2007 or I forgot what game, what day it was, 05, 06, 07, somewhere right there when I was, well, when Cecilia and I were both in high school. Brett Favre goes off that night and freaking plays for his dad, and he absolutely destroyed the Raiders. Um, <laughs> we're used to getting destroyed, just kidding. But, um, but he just goes off, and it's just one of those emotional things where you like, you know, I'm playing, I'm playing for them, I'm gonna play. You know, they could sit out because this is a very serious thing. It's like you don't go to work. You know, you you have the choice to not go to work, and you shouldn't be fired for that. Okay, uh, you know, for I'm missing because a loved one has just passed. But sometimes these athletes will just say, you know what, they they it hurts them, but they go and play for them. So Ben Wallace was in a very emotional state. They were losing this game horribly bad, okay? They were he was emotional. And he's also a no nonsense guy. Ben Wallace is a very no nonsense kind of guy. And Ron Artest is the same exact way. Some people would say that Ron Artest was a mental case or a head case or whatever, whatever. He's just got a hot temper, you guys. And and he just like, need to learn how to control it. He even says that he admits it, that he you know, he did not control his emotions and everything back then and um he even had a therapist on the road with him. They had a therapist on the road with them, guys, and she would like, give him therapy during the uh, during the season. Crazy, right? Um, I mean, not that crazy, but I'm just saying. It's just, you, know, he, he, you can see he was trying to get right, though, right? Yeah. He's making an effort. So Jamal Tinsley gets in the game when the game was over, basically. And this one fan, the fan that fought, actually, that was on the court, that squared up with Ron Artest, he even says it in the uh, Netflix series that they're being disrespectful. And it's true. When you get a team that's just pouring it on, the, the game's clearly over. You're not really subbing anybody. The stars are still in. You're still making hard fouls. You know what I mean? It's frustrating because you're like, just end the game already. You know what I mean? Run the clock out. You're not. We're not going to win. You know what I mean? But just run it out. It's over. We'll see you guys next time. Or we'll see you in the playoffs. But guess what? The Pacers were like, no. Remember, remember, remember when y'all beat us in the, in the playoffs? Well, tonight's a regular season game. We're going to let you have it. So they did. When Ron Artest got fouled a little bit earlier in the game or right before or whenever, he got up and was like, that wasn't a foul? Like, I don't know who said that. Maybe he did something. But he got checked by Ben Wallace, and it wasn't a foul. When Jamal Tinsley gets in the game for a sub, or I don't know if he's a starter or whatever, but he gets in, he goes over to Ron Artest and tells him, now you can get your foul, or go get your foul, or whatever. He tells him something like that. Even Steven Jackson in the series was all like, why in the hell would you tell a guy like Ron Artest that you can go get your foul now? Because the game's over, and what, it's, just, it's a foul, and you can get Ben Wallace back. So he does. He does. Ron Artest goes and checks Ben Wallace hard, because he even said, I just didn't want to get the shot. And he freaking checked him, and Ben Wallace just goes off. Okay, after that whole thing happens, Ron Artest clearly understands that he messed up, okay, or maybe he didn't mess up, but okay, he needs to get out of a heated situation. His team's starting to fight. Ben Wallace is taking off his, his sweatpants. He's throwing them at Ron Artest <laughs> across. you got other guys. Steven Jackson's ready to fight. And what happens? Something crazy. Once Ron Artest can see that he is in a situation where things can get really ugly, what happens? He does a take five. I did not know this, but in physical therapy, or physical therapy, physical therapy, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because my, my LCL was a little injured. <laughs> no, I just went to physical therapy a couple weeks ago, but... In therapy, okay, when you're getting, you know, mental help, I guess there's this thing that they call a take five, at least for him. In his, in his, uh, what would you call that? Like in his therapy? <laughs> in his therapy. Yeah. And he went and laid down the scores table. And he even said it. I was taking five. I was taking five. I was laying down and just letting the moment pass and just gathering my thoughts, gathering myself. He said he was breathing. He was, he was breathing. deep breaths. The guy was trying to avoid the situation, wasn't he, babe? Yeah. Okay. He laid down. Everyone else was fighting. He laid down. Then this fool, and even Reggie Miller says it, that the, the players, of course, and you guys know how it goes. For those of you who go to sports games and everything, when the big time, when when when, when, the, when the teams start losing and it's like clearly over, people start making their way to the, to the exits, to the doors. Okay, guess what? When people started making their way to the doors, those people were the season ticket, the season ticket holders, the people who have a lot of money. <laughs> and guess what? Those people, those people left their seats open. And Reggie Miller even said that the people that were up top that couldn't afford those seats and everything, 
clearly a lot of them were intoxicated. It doesn't mean that season ticket holders wouldn't be intoxicated either. But I'm going to say, people were, I mean, there's a lot, apparently he said that, you know, people were drinking and everything. And, of course, they do. I didn't know if they cut the, when they cut the liquor then, um, at what quarter. But regardless, these people start trickling down into those season ticket holder seats. And this chaos, because, you know, just people were getting crazy. And this dude throws a freaking bottle and apparently, you know, he, he, he aimed pretty well that night because he smacks Ron Artest in the face. Ron Artest is taking five and breathing. The moment that bottle hits his face, that ended. <laughs> Ron Artest runs up in the stands, misses the guy who hits him, or hit him with the bottle, punches another guy. Steven Jackson gets up in there, starts punching, gets a beer thrown in his face, starts, starts punching, and you guys know the rest of it. I just told you guys a little bit ago. Now, now knowing this in this scene, I mean, of course, a fan started it. It's really sad because what happened afterwards, and this is what we really, what I really wanted to get into tonight. Really sad. Ron Artest, after all of this, would get an entire full year suspension, 81 games or 82 games, um, his suspension, and he would be out for a year. Stephen Jackson would face, I believe, 30 games, and Jermaine Taylor or J- Jermaine Taylor, Jermaine O'Neal would face, I believe, a 25-game suspension. They would all go to court, I think, or a few of them. I know Jermaine Taylor, uh, Jermaine O'Neal, keep calling Jermaine Taylor, my bad. Jermaine O'Neal would go to court, all the appeals and everything. Regardless, I don't know what happened with the criminal charges. I, I, know, I know they were in there, but overall, even Steve, Stephen Jackson says that none of the cases, or none of the suspensions got... Um, None of them got reduced. And there you have it. The NBA, rest in peace, David Stern, but the NBA was trying to cover their own butt. And it was really sad because this fan started it. And these are grown men trying to survive in a chaotic place where people are coming out of the stands to fight these people, to fight these players, to fight these athletes. It's just not fair. I get it. They're they're high up. They're they're heavily you know conditioned athletes. They're awesome. But at the same exact time, you know, people out there that can also hurt people in other ways. I don't care. You know, an equalizer. They can freaking throw a bottle and knock somebody out or throw a chair like they were doing. I'm just saying, it was ridiculous. And knowing that, yeah, that fan started it. John Green, okay, the guy who threw the bottle. It's really sad to say that this happened. And. The NBA wasn't doing anything to help their athletes. No. I mean, what did you think about that? When you heard that last night of the first, I know you, you had a couple comments there. Uh, if you could think about what you were saying, I mean, or what you said last night, or even now that I bring it up. I mean, what do you think about that from the NBA? I mean, it's sad because, I mean, you, as an athlete, you trust your, I don't know what it would be, your company, your owner, whatever. Governing body, your league, yeah, there your, you your league or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. To, you know you would trust them to cover you basically or to get your, you know, to have your back. But unfortunately, you know, it doesn't happen that way just because NBA is watching their own backs. And of course, you know, making sure that hardly anything comes out of their pockets basically. And, um, you know, but I I mean, that's really it. It's just, yeah, it's just sad that they're not willing to cover their athletes and, you know, um, not have their backs. Agreed. And that was really sad. I'm very bothered at the fact that that had to happen. And it sucks. But at the end of the day, what do you do? You know? It happened and it happened. Because it sucks, too. Because if you're an athlete, you want to get to the big leagues like that because, you know, you're playing something that you love and um, th- it seems like they're the only way to do it. So, and then you know you go through something like that, and it's just like for me, I would probably be torn. I probably wouldn't want to play for them anymore. But at the same time, how could I sacrifice something that I like to do or love to do? Very well said. It'd be a love hate relationship, I guess, with the NBA. No, very well said. Because I, I agree. I think it would be very hard to be like, wow, that you're. This is the pinnacle. The NBA is the pinnacle. This is where I've always dreamed of playing, but my goodness, one thing happens, and you guys, I know I messed up and everything, but you can't have our back. You know, no, I get it. Ron Artest could have easily had the ball thrown at him, got up and pointed, and be like, hey, I want that guy arrested. You know what I mean? Press charges. Yeah. He, yes. But this, at the same time, you just got a heated fight on the court. You're trying to take five. You're trying to be cool. A ball hits you in the face. You're already hyped up. You're, you're going to go into fight mode, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying. Some, not everybody. 
Now, I love it because Cecilia last night was just saying, or two nights ago we were watching this saying, <laughs> too rough. I love, I love her famous quote. I love it. I always, she tells me all the time, even when I get a little heated or whatever, whatever, with certain things when it comes to, you know, just me getting mad at so-and-so, road rage, whatever, whatever, like anywhere. I love this woman. Okay. <laughs> she tells me straight up, two wrongs don't make her right. She says it all the time. And every time she says it, it's like the first time I heard it all over again. Because it's like, ah, I can't say anything to that. What do I really say? What, what am I going to sit there? I, I, she's absolutely right. And it, <laughs> no matter how heated I am at whatever the situation may be, I mean, yeah, she's absolutely right. So I get it. Maybe not everybody would get it all infuriated. I know me, I would have probably been in the stands because I run our tests. I mean, you know, but but it's just this mentality, the Sicilian mentality. I love it uh, because, yeah, she's definitely not into violence. And I'm not I, very hot-headed either. She's though, not so. hot-headed either. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so with that said, you guys, that happens. And then, of course, the penalties and everything pan out. And then on top of all of that, the 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 reputations are what come next. Well, that's just, uh, actually, Steven Jackson would move on, and he would win a title with the Spurs. I forgot how many years later, but he would get a title. Uh, Ron Artest would legally change his name to Meta World Peace. To being a peaceful name, Meta, he was explaining last night, a Buddhist name, or, like, you know, happy and a good person, a good guy. So his name, or, you know, good person, good guy, I'm not sure, um, all of it in depth, but um, he changed his name, of course, his last name, World Peace. Uh, a lot of you Laker fans like myself know he went on to the Lakers and helped win. I believe it was both 2009 and 10 when we beat the uh, the Magic and the Celtics. Um, of course, Kobe's last two titles that he would win. May he rest in everlasting peace. Um, but I gotta say, um, I forgot. I don't know if it was both years or one year, but I think I think it was both years. Uh, regardless, though, man, just amazing, amazing stuff there from from Meta World Peace after all this happened. Uh, but he even said it. He felt like a coward because he moved on. He ran away from that team. He, didn't, he said he was on national television wearing that jersey in his worst moment. So he doesn't want anything to do with it, and he asked for a trade. And he, Stephen Jackson was like, I, I thought that was a coward move. And, and then uh, Jermaine O'Neal said the same thing. So I guess for a long time it ruined their relationship. I don't know if they're cool to this day. I don't know if they're not cool to this day. I don't know. But that happened. But the person that I think it really got, which is really sad, we both watched it, and we were both like, Can you? I mean, it was just weird, but... The one player who it really affected, like reputation-wise, Jermaine O'Neal, he never won a title. I think he stayed. I don't know what happened to him, but he never won a title. And it's sad because the other two guys that were part of that team went on to win a title. And he said it kind of stuck with him, and that's it. That that that. I mean, it didn't really define his career, but it kind of messed him up because, I don't know, I mean, he's never won a title after that. And it broke up that really good team. I mean, come on. They have Steven Jackson, Jermaine O'Neal, uh, Ron Artest. And, and Reggie Miller, I mean, that's a, that's an amazing team. And it's incredible because it's very sought to believe. I was reading an article earlier, as a matter of fact, when I was at work. And um, really cool. Uh, I just want to, you know, give this a little piece real quick. Um, it is, uh, let's see, where are we at? Okay, uh, this is basketballreference.com. But, uh, oh, I'm sorry, no, basketball reference, wow. Wow, stupid me. Reggie Miller's last game in the NBA, I Googled it, and I found a cool article here. Um, written by, let's see, Len Whirl, that's L-E-N-W-E-R-L-E, -E -E, on June 11th, 2020. And I think they're just reflecting on this game. But Reggie Miller, uh, they said basically here that, you know, of course, one of the greatest players of all time. But crazy because of what they said. It says, um, I'm going to read a paragraph from this. A series the Pacers may not have lost without the suspension of Ron Artest. And Reggie Miller, of course, did retire that year. I even remember him saying that he was, everyone, he, nobody really knew, I heard him on an interview, um, that no one ever, like, no one knew that it was his last season. Except for him, because he knew this was it, 17 years or 18 years, I think, in the league. And he said here, he said, uh, Oh, of course, they lost. They would lose to the Pistons, of course, as you would know, as they would have it, in the 2005 playoffs. I don't know if it was the finals, but regardless, they got in there. And um, sad. It was in it was in Conse uh, Conseco Fieldhouse, where the Pacers would play. 
for places to play, and uh, it was in the semifinals, and they would lose 88-79, to and this is where the Pistons would win the series 4-2, to two, four games to two games, and it says here in this paragraph, a series the Pacers may not have lost without the suspension, the suspensions of Ron Artest, Stephen Jackson, and Jermaine O'Neal. O'Neal and Jackson were back in um, time for the playoffs following the mouse at the palace, the most famous brawl in NBA history earlier that season. Now, is that does that mean that O'Neal and Jackson didn't contribute? They did. But our test was gone. And all of them together, it's like having a car with three wheels. You can get somewhere, but you're not going to get everywhere. They needed that fourth wheel. They needed that they needed to run our test. And unfortunately it didn't happen. And that was the year that Reggie called it and that was it. I, I truly believe. I mean, do you really think how, how good they were that season, babe? Do you really think that if they would have had a raw test, they probably would have beaten the Pistons and went on and won a, won a title that year? Do you really think so? I don't know. Um, I mean, yeah, he's a good player, but I don't know. I feel like just because one person sits out doesn't mean that, I don't know, can't depend on just that one person, I guess. That's a great way of putting it. It really is. he's not the one who makes the team. It's everyone. That's it, exactly. So It's something that you'll never know, though. Who knows? We'll never know if with him playing, I mean, maybe, but who knows, maybe not. Never know. No, it's the truth. Maybe we will never know that. Unfortunately, it's really sad because even they were saying it, you know, like even Stephen Jackson said it, it's sad because he's he felt they would have won that year. And unfortunately, um, because of all that happening and all that, guess what? Uh, Reggie Miller doesn't have a ring, and... Sucks because, you know, he's a great guy. He didn't even play that game. He was trying to get out of harm's way that day. He was trying to get his teammates out of trouble. Unfortunately, that happened and just things went bad. Tough, tough break for those those, uh, Pacers. And sadly, that's just how that would end. And the Pacers still have not won a title since then. Of course, all the players have long retired. uh, But that's just how it goes. So with that said, my goodness, uh, any final thoughts on that crazy Crazy scene that night at the palace, babe. The malice of the palace, the worst night in NBA history. Um, no. I mean, anybody who's hot-headed, they just should keep their cool. <laughs> I com- and deal with it in a professional manner, I guess. I completely agree. So, with that said, y'all, that was fun. So, I am really excited because we are back on air. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time to cue the music because we're out of here. With that said, y'all, that was lots of fun tonight. And we really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you're listening live or on the podcast, we just really want to thank you so very much uh, for you know uh, listening to, listen to us and join our sports content here Um it's been a while, and we're glad we are back on air every Friday evening. We'll see if we can switch some time to make it earlier get some more listeners. But I definitely want to say thank you to everybody tuning in every week or that has tuned in every week uh, from the very start when we started the show. Thank you so very much. Make sure to give us a follow at IE Sports Radio, at IE Sports Radio on Twitter and on Instagram and on Facebook. Give us a like. We certainly like that. And, of course, give us a follow at TS. What is that? T. S. I, what is that? I forgot what it is. Oh my goodness. I forgot our Twitter handle. We just got a brand new Twitter handle. My apologies. I want to make sure I say it right. Of course, this is an acronym for our show, so I feel like an idiot. So, T-S-C-P underscore I-E-S-R. And that is at T-S-C-P underscore I-E-S-R. Give us a follow. So, again, I'll be posting up, of course. It's fun stuff, of course, and stuff we're doing, what places we're at, whatever, whatever, of course, any sports games we go to, we're putting on there. Or anything sports, of course, or anything not, yes, not sports. Putting up some dinner or whatever we're doing, or just having some fun with it. Y'all, y'all, just having fun. So, with that said, any last thoughts on the next year? Thank you for listening. Take care, be safe, stay safe. There you go, y'all. So with that said, we are out of here for tonight. Thanks for catch us next week. Uh, like I said, we make change time, we may not. Uh, this is on our favorites right now. I'm more likely to stay here right now, but we'll talk about it pretty soon if we will. But that's basically it, y'all. So with that said, you can follow me, of course. Everyone there will be at the THEM square LB53 on Twitter. Once again, that's at the THEM underscore LB53 on Twitter. And give us both a follow, of course, because we're both on this Twitter account. So we have one. But... 
Yeah, because she's she's not a Twitter fan. She's she's no. she's not a Twitter fan. She I, I said that because she's just yeah she's not a fan of the platform. Um, but I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Uh, she'll definitely be chiming in, or I'll be at least showing her stuff here on the other Twitter handle about you know what you guys the listeners did. So we appreciate that, and thanks again. So once again, give us a follow at TSCPS for I E Sports Radio or I E S R again at TSCPS for I E S R, and that will do it. We will see y'all next week. Until then, take care, and as always, God bless.